Good evening. This is All India Radio Kohima. I'm Jonas Yantan with Evening News. The headlines. Sender decides to start COVID-19 vaccination for 12 to 14 years age groups from Witness Day. Second part of the budget session of parliament resumes. Sender reiterates to explore all possible options to meet the country's energy demand in view of the Ukraine crisis and COVID-19 pandemic. And Nagaland Governor Institute's Governor's Excellence Award in Science Study for HSSLC students. As we start the bulletin, we appeal our listeners to stay safe from COVID-19 by following these four simple steps. Get fully vaccinated, wear a face mask, maintain six feet for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. The Centre, after due deliberations with scientific bodies, has decided to start COVID-19 vaccination for 12 to 13 years and 13 to 14 years age groups from 16 of this month. It will be for those born in 2008, 2009 and 2010 who are already above 12 years of age. The COVID-19 vaccine to be administered would be Corpovax, manufactured by Biological Evans Hyderabad. The government has also decided that the condition of go morbidity for COVID-19 precaution dose for population over 60 years of age will be removed forthwith. Hence, from 16th March 2022 onwards, the entire population above 60 years of age will be eligible for the precaution dose of COVID-19 vaccine. The second part of the budget session of the parliament has resumed today. Both the houses returned to their normal sittings in view of the decline in COVID-19 cases. On the first day of the second part of the budget session, the Rajya Sabha chairman M. Bengayan Naitu urged the members to sustain the positive spirit of the first part of the session in this part as well. In his remarks, Naitu also talked about the inadequate attendance of members in the meetings of the Parliamentary Standing Committee and said attending the meeting should be given priority by the members. The Rajya Sabha has taken up the discussion on the working of the Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region, DONA. Initiating the discussion, Congress MP Ripun Bora said the Congress government had taken a series of measures during its tenure for the development of the North Eastern Region. He alleged that the present government has diluted the vision of former Prime Minister Adal Bihari Vajpayee in creating the donor ministry, saying no single mega project had been initiated in the Northeast by the present government while two public sector undertakings were closed down in Assam in 2015. Sushmita Dev of Trinamul Congress said illegal coal mining was a big issue in the northeastern region and urged the donor ministry to set up an office in the region for efficient redressal of grievances tied to the interstate border disputes. Raising the issue of Armed Forces Special Powers Act of SPA, Tiruchi Siva of TMG said it is high time to reconsider the enforcement of AFSPA in the northeast region. BJP MP Pubaneshwar Galita countered opposition saying implementation of projects have become faster now and in a time-bound manner. The centre today reiterated that it will explore all possible options to meet the country's energy demand in view of the Ukraine crisis and COVID-19 pandemic. Replying to supplementaries in the Rajya Sabha, Petroleum Minister Hartip Singh Buri said the government has con- contacted Russian Federation and discussion is underway over several issues. On the petroleum prices, the minister said prices of petrol and diesel have been determined by several international and national factors. He said the centre has taken steps to bring down the prices of petrol and diesel by reducing excise duty in November last to provide relief to the consumers. The minister said nine states have not brought down duties levied on petrol and diesel. This news comes to you from All India Radio, Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News on AI app and YouTube channel AIA News, Kohima. Governor of Nagaland, Professor Jagdish Mukhi, has instituted an award on basic sciences. The award to be called the Governor's Excellence Award in Science Study for HSSLC examination will be given to the best six students in the HSSLC examination in Science Stream 
conducted by Nagaland Board of School Education with subject combinations of physics, chemistry and mathematics as well as physics, chemistry and biology. The award includes a citation along with cash award of 1 lakh rupees, 50,000 rupees and 25,000 rupees to the best three students in order of merit in each subject combination. The award will be a one time only and students must belong to an indigenous scheduled tribe of Nagaland. Following the announcement of the election commission to conduct the biennial election to the upper house of parliament from six states on 31st of March, the election by the members of Nagaland Legislative Assembly to fill one seat in the Council of States on the retirement of Geji Kenye on 2nd of April will take place at the conference hall and next room of the Assembly Secretariat. The poll will take place between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. In a notification, additional secretary and returning officer Nagalin, Legislative Assembly Secretariat, Kro Hitonio Rio, informed that nomination papers should be delivered by a candidate or his proposer to the returning officer or the assistant returning officer between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. on any day other than public holiday and not later than 21st of March. The nomination papers will be taken up for scrutiny at noon on March 22nd, while notice of withdrawal of candidature should be furnished to the Office of Returning Officer before 3 p.m. on 24th of March. In Manipur, the newly elected members of the 12th Legislative Assembly have taken oath as members this morning. Pro Dem Speaker S. Rajan administered oath to the 60 members at the Assembly Hall. Meanwhile, BJP, which got the absolute majority in the recently concluded general election, is expected to form a BJP-led government. The leaders of the party have begun discussions for formation of the government and selection of a chief minister candidate. A one-day workshop on counter-wildlife and biodiversity conservation organized by Nagaland Forest Department, Wildlife Conservation India and the Nagaland State Biodiversity Board was held on Saturday last at Walker. Addressing the gathering, ADC Walker, Lankonsen T. Tsanglao said, wild animals is a critical resource for human beings and although hunting had been practiced by our forefathers since time immemorial, the age-old practice should be discouraged and focus should be on conserving our ecosystem for the present and future generation since many species are getting extinct. Chairman Nagaland State Biodiversity Board Satya Prakash Tripathi sought cooperation from all sections to work together to conserve wildlife and environment. Nagaland today reported four new COVID-19 positive cases and six recoveries. The state's current total confirmed cases stand at 35,447, while 33,149 have recovered from the infection. There are currently 59 active cases in the state. The newly formed Football Association Zeminu District has informed that selection trial for Zeminu team for the upcoming Dr. Tiao Inter District Trophy 2022 will be held on 18th and 19th of March at Rengma Sports Association Ground, Zeminu Old Town. The association said details on the selection trials will be intimated by the technical team. And now to the news, here are the main points again. Centre decides to start COVID-19 vaccination for 12 to 14 years age groups from Wednesday. Second part of the budget session of Parliament resumes. Centre reiterates to explore all possible options to meet the country's energy demand in view of the Ukraine crisis and COVID-19 pandemic. A Nagalan Governor Institute's Governor's Excellence Award in Science Study for HSSLC students. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.